Hello, wildlings. I'm your creep smith, and you found my fear forge. <laughs> Lucky you. Our story this evening contains mentions of domestic abuse, so if that's a bad subject for you, you might want to find something else to listen to. Tonight's tale, Bad Time to Call, by MJTR. I had probably the most hated job on the face of the earth. My hours were awful, my pay was shit, and it sucked all around. I was a telemarketer. Not because I wanted to be, mind you. Believe me, I hated calling people when they were in the middle of dinner, getting scolded for trying to call people at ungodly hours, getting sworn at, and getting hung up on. However, the sad fact was that I had majored in philosophy back in college and I couldn't really do anything with it. Telemarketing was sadly one of the only jobs that paid the bills for a guy like me. I was not lazy. I would have loved to get into a better line of work. This job always felt like it was sucking my soul out, and the nights left me too exhausted to try and find another job. Not to mention that I had nothing else to put on my resume, so I doubted that anything else would ever hire me. I only found the guts to quit that job after one particularly bad night back in early 2008. I remember having a horribly bad night of calls. Several people had done everything from yelling at me to holding their phone up to the screaming scene from The Exorcist. And who really cared if these people planned to vote for one president or the other? I didn't even plan to vote myself. I, I just wasn't into politics, so why should I care if these other people were? Because it was the only way I was going to get a paycheck. I hated myself for it. I remember going down my list of numbers to a cell phone number for Monique... Winthrop. Fuck me, I muttered under my breath. I hated cell phone calls the most. Lord only knew where they would be, what kind of horrible shit they could try and pull on me. Not to mention, if this woman was at a concert or something, she would have to scream before I could hear her. I know that sounds like paranoia, but I had been through that kind of shit before so, so many times. I considered skipping over it entirely before I half-heartedly dialed the number and waited for the rings, counting them in my head. Between four and six rings was usually where an answering machine would kick in. Whenever I heard more than eight, I would just hang up and write it down as unavailable. Corporate policy said that I should wait until ten, but I knew the pencil pushers upstairs really didn't pay attention to these kind of things. I managed to count to six before the phone was answered. I sighed to myself, at least glad that it was quiet on the other end, no annoying rock show or anything in the background. I waited for a hello, but didn't hear one. I continued to listen intently, sure that if I did not hear a hello, I would hear a click. Instead, I heard nothing. Hello there. Is Miss Monique Winthrop available? I asked for a few seconds. Even I could hear how pathetic I sounded. What followed was a sound in the distance, something not so close to the phone, but still audible. What I heard was the reason I quit my job. Thought you could hide in there, did you, you little cunt? I froze hearing the sound of a screaming man on the other side of the phone. A moment later, I heard a higher scream of a woman and sudden movement, as if the phone had been knocked to the ground. My jaw was suddenly slack in horror. The woman on the other end of the line continued to scream. I had no idea what to do. I just sat there, paralyzed in fear. And soon... 
Her screams became mangled-sounding gargles. Then I heard a child screaming, asking for his mother to be let go. There was a loud banging sound right near the phone, as if a person had crashed into a wall. The woman screamed again through the gargling until her screams slowly faded away. Then the boy was screaming again, accompanied by the heavier breaths of the man who had been yelling before, and he started to scream and continued to do so until I heard a loud snapping sound. Then the line went dead. Too stunned to say anything, I hung up the phone, gathered my things, and walked out of the agency that night. I just never went back. So sometimes it doesn't take supernatural evil or hostile monsters for there to be horror. Sometimes basic human cruelty will do the job. Stay scary, wildlings, and try to make the most of your nights.